Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm still enjoying the beautiful sunshine and summer in Sardinia. In this video, I'm gonna take you on a little tour to a wine farm I visited and also introduce you to a Sardinian red wine. So first of all, here is a very brief introduction to a Vigne Sural. Now we're en route to our second vineyard of the day, which is Vigne Sural, based in the small town of Arzacena. The legend goes that the Roman god of wine, Bacchus, loved the Sural Valley so much that he started winemaking here as a way of making peace with the Greek invaders and preventing further blood from being shed. As you can see from the vineyard's backdrop, Sardinia is a very rural, mountainous island and feels almost untouched by the flurry of the modern world. The winery's ultra-modern and stylish interior is quite a contrast to its rural setting, and it's all about bringing art and nature together. One of the things I love about Sardinian vineyards is the fact that they're open until really late, and by late I mean 10 p.m. or so. Anyway, let's taste Vigne Sural's Sural red wine. So a little bit of information about the wine farm. Their speciality is Cananao, which is a red grape, also known as Grenache, and Vermentino, which is the most widely planted white varietal. They make a huge range of wines, and for example, they've got two, two champagnes actually, one rosé made from Cananao, and one white made from Vermentino. They've also got a white dessert wine, a red dessert wine, and then a whole range of dry style Cananaos and dry style Vermentinos. So the wine we're going to be tasting today is the Sural, and this is a blend. It's a blend of Cananao, Carignano, which is simply Carignan, and Muristello. Now Muristello is the Sardinian name for Graciano, and Graciano is typically a Spanish grape, and it goes into making the famous Spanish red wine, Rioja. Anyway, onto our wine tasting. So this one. I've popped it in the fridge because it's so damn hot here. Um, so if you would leave it at room temperature, you'd be drinking wine at about 30 degrees, which is not good. That's our red wine. So, ooh. Getting a nice raspberry, blueberry, very, very lively nose there which is quite interesting because I tried this one yesterday and the wine was at a warmer temperature and I got completely different aromas. I think yesterday I was getting more plums, dried fruit and a fruit cakiness, but today it's very much a more fresh and berry-like aroma. I think I prefer the fresh and berry-like aroma. It's amazing how the temperature of the wine can completely transform the wine. So this wine is probably at about 16 degrees now, which is a little bit cooler than you would serve a red wine. Usually the ideal temperature for a red wine is 18 to 20 degrees, but this is no bad thing. It's about midday here, pretty warm, so I don't think you'd want a wine any warmer than this. It's quite a strong lead pencil aroma coming through, which gives the wine, kind of takes the edge off the fruitiness of a wine, because depending on your taste, an overly fruity wine can be unpleasant but this balances really, really well with those plum and berry aromas. Finishes a nice clean finish, but doesn't completely disappear. It slightly lingers, but it doesn't leave, you know, an overly tannic sensation in your mouth. In fact, I think the tannins are perfectly balanced. You can drink this on its own, or I think it would be perfect with food as well. Think about it like nice platter of salami, some cheeses and cold grilled vegetables, that kind of thing. But just some more information about this wine. I mentioned in my last video about the Italian way of classifying wines. So you've got DOCG, DOC, and then third in line is the IGT, which this wine is. Now IGT stands for Indicazione Geografica Tipica, and it means it's kind of ticked the boxes to be a good quality wine, but just hasn't gone that extra mile to fulfill the high classification requirements. 
However, this does not mean that it's necessarily a worse wine. It, it's, it's kind of a more bureaucratic thing, but it does give you some guidelines. Um, and with IGT, they do specify regions. So for example, this one is IGT Isola de Nuragi. So for example, if South Africa, if the South African wine industry did implement its own classification system, this might be IGT Stellenbosch to show you it's a wine from Stellenbosch that has fulfilled a certain level of quality. Thanks for watching my video guys. Check back next week where I'll be taking you on another trip to another Sardinian vineyard. I'd love to hear from you, so please leave any comments you might have. Give it a good thumbs up. Follow me on Twitter, subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. And thank you to everyone who has subscribed already. Um, see you next time. Cheers.